So you got into nursing school. Now what? So today's video is going to be about what's the next step after getting accepted into nursing school. So I have been in nursing school for the last year and I'm in my last term or second to last term. This one is about to end in a couple of weeks. And when I first got to nursing school, it was a shock. It was like getting hit by a train. It was something totally different. Even though I've been to college, um, I've taken exams in college, I've passed college courses and everything like that. Nursing school is a different beast. It's different types of questions, different testing styles, so much more information. And because my program is accelerated, everything is really quick. Like we take tests once or twice a week sometimes. Sometimes we even have three tests. I've even had it to where we were taking four exams in one week. So it can be very fast, especially if you are in an accelerated program such as myself. I'm in an accelerated um, LVM program or LPM program um, at my school. It does not play. So what I'm going to do is give you six tips today that will help you when you first get into nursing school that I wish I would have known before I even walked through the door. Okay, I'm looking down because I have my notes. So tip number one is read the chapters. As soon as you get your syllabus and you know when that first exam is gonna be, start reading those chapters. You wanna get started ahead of time because you wanna have time to read the chapters more than once. If you only read it one time, you're gonna miss a lot of information and it's usually the information that they put on the exams. The little stuff, the little stuff that's in the fine print, the stuff that's in the graphs, the stuff that's in like little tables and stuff like that, that's the stuff that they put on the exams because they want to make sure that you actually read that book. So read, read, read. I can't stress that enough. Read. You have to read. This is not like regular college where you can just listen to a lecture, watch a PowerPoint, this, that, and the third. No not gonna cut it <laughs> I learned that my first exam in my nursing fundamentals class and I bombed it because I was like oh okay I listened to the lecture I went over the PowerPoint I, I thought I was ready then I got to the test and the questions oh my god the questions themselves were a beast that takes me to my next tip do NCLEX questions investing you a good app to use to do NCLEX questions on your spare time. Even when you like just sitting, if you catch the bus, if you're sitting on the bus, do some NCLEX questions on your phone. If you're just laying on a couch, do NCLEX questions while you're watching TV. Just do at least 10 questions starting off a day of NCLEX questions because it's gonna help you on your exams because it's gonna get you familiar with those styles of questions. The styles of questions that they actually test you on on each exam are NCLEX questions. They're NCLEX style questions. It's not just gonna be black and white, like what color, what, how do you spell blue? No, it's gonna be like the rainbow color. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. If you've never seen these type of types of questions before, it, it is definitely recommended that you start off by trying to do some NCLEX questions. My next point is get a study group. If it gotta just be you and two other people, that's fine. Most of my study groups, I would prefer for it to only be like me and two other people because when you get a bunch of people, you all get to talking and you get off topic too much. You don't want to always study alone because studying with other people, you bounce ideas off of each other. You holler out different information and maybe you missed that information while you were reading, but that other person didn't. Well, that, for me, for example, one of my friends, she always comes up with like little sayings. Like for example, when we were studying um, the cranial nerves and she was talking about the olfactory sense. Um, the olfactory nerve which is for smell she said oh funky ass for olfactory and I never will forget that again <laughs> I would never forget that because olfactory oh funky ass like 
it was it's great like and she does that for everything and that helps me a lot because i don't really come up with those types of things but that it really helps me like different mnemonics like that i don't think that's a mnemonic but you know what i'm saying but yeah a study group is perfect i love studying with other people because when you're for me if i'm hollering things out and then they're responding for some reason it helps me retain the information like that before every exam my entire class is only about 10 of us we sit in the classroom and we just start hollering out what is such and such what is this what is that and then we take the test and most of the times that helps me tremendously because it's like that last minute thing that somebody said was definitely on the test and I didn't even know it before like 20 minutes before we took the exam. So it's perfect. So the next thing you want to do is when you're taking ex exam and you're going in for the first time in that class to take your first exam, you want to start off strong never say oh it's just the first exam I could fail this exam or I'm not gonna study that much it's just the first exam I'm just gonna take this test to see what it's like because you want to start strong because the as the um, semester goes on or the term goes on the tests do get harder they get harder so if you start off strong you have that cushion if you start off low so let's say you start off with a 65 now every grade that you get you're trying to bring that grade up whereas if you start off with an 80 a 95 every grade that you're getting you're trying to keep that grade up instead of you're fighting for points trying to bring a grade up so definitely start off strong study hard for that first exam you know study hard for all of your exams but make sure that first exam um, that you start off strong also don't just neglect homework don't neglect homework don't neglect any quizzes because you're gonna need those points you want that cushion even though they're only small a small percentage of your grade you want every point that you can get trust me these classes are no joke you want to take advantage of every little ounce of extra point even though it's not an extra point but you want to take advantage of all those small small points just in case you get to the end of that final you bomb the final but you still were able to pass the class because you you did good on your homework you did good on those quizzes so my next point is study a little bit every day I mean I know that when you're in nursing school you're really stressed out you know you don't have a lot of time for everything you might be taking more than one class together like we are We're, we take two classes at a time so you have more you have homework for this class you have homework for that class what you want to do is study a little bit every day at least read a chapter a day so and start as soon as it's time to take that exam don't wait till two three days before it's time to take the exam to start trying to study no you want to start as soon as your your teacher starts that lecture and if you can you know the day before she lectures read the chapter study a little bit because you want to use all the time that you can to gather as much information about the subject that you're being taught so that you can pick up a little bit every day and you don't have to hurry up and cram on the last day for the exam that is sadly my downfall <laughs> i don't like studying ahead of time for some reason um i get i retain more information when i do it maybe two or three days before the exam if it's like a week ahead of the exam i can't study i can't just be like okay i'm studying I study better and I retain more information when I'm under pressure. That's just me. I do not recommend that Recommend that for everybody else. I really don't because I feel like even though I'm not failing, I am passing all of my classes, but I feel like I would do better on my test if I could just study ahead of time, but I can't. Like I can't. It's, it's For me, it's physically impossible <laughs> for me to study a week in advance. Like I sit there and just look at the, the stuff. It just, it does not retain. When I'm, when I'm not under pressure, it does not stick in my head. But when I'm under pressure, I get it done. I, could, I study, I take the test, and I'm like always the first one to finish on my exams. Like it's 
crazy and I really I mean I study don't get me wrong like I do study but if it's not three three days three two to three days before the exam it's not gonna get done what else um oh oh my god this one right here I don't know how everybody else's school does but my school they teach you your skills mainly when you first start the program so your first two terms is where you're going to get the bulk of your skills so with that being said by the time you get to med surge 2 you're no longer going to be learning skills your last skill that you actually learn um the last class that you learn skills in is going to be med surge 1. so with that being said you probably learned those skills three, four months in advance and you haven't practiced. And my school likes to throw in what we call simulation labs, where they're, they give you a scenario, you go in a lab, just you by yourself, and you have to be the nurse. And you have to run through all of the skills that they told you to do on this uh, particular patient. Well, if you haven't practiced your skills, you're gonna lose your skills. So definitely take time out of your day. If you have free time while you're just at school, not doing nothing, you're just talking to people, say, come on guys, let's go in a lab. Let's practice a nasal gastric insertion. Let's practice doing heparin shots. Let's practice, you know, doing what? Doing a catheter. Cause I know for us, we learn inserting a catheter in the first term. So we haven't done that again. And you might say to yourself, well, I mean, that's what clinicals are for, wrong. You don't do skills in clinicals. <laughs> the only time you get to do skills is if you got lucky. We literally do ADLs every time we go to clinical. We basically do the job of the CNA. Now I have gotten lucky in the past two weeks with my clinicals because I've been able to do things, but it hasn't been the bulk of my skills that I've learned. I have, I still haven't done a nasal, in, a nasal gastric insertion on a real person. I've never done a catheter on a real person. I have never cleaned a trach on a real person. I haven't done a, a lot of my skills that I've done in the skills lab on a real person. I've given injections so far. You know, I've done stuff with like the meds and everything like that, push meds and IVs and stuff like that. But as far as the other skills, the bulk of the skills, I have not done. So I definitely recommend that you practice that outside of class because you don't wanna lose it. You're a nurse, that's what you need. You need your skills. I mean, it is good to know all of, you know, the lecture and the didactic that they give us but i mean if you don't have the, your skills like you're just walking around with a bunch of knowledge but you have no way of actually you know performing a lot of the skills that you're going to need to do on a daily basis especially if you work in like a um l tech or something like that because i know in nursing homes it's a little bit different but yeah practice your skills y'all you need your skills but anyway, so that's all for this video. I will have other information for you guys um, because I've picked up a lot along the way. If you have any other questions about nursing school, please feel free to comment below. I do comment back. But don't forget to rate this video, leave a comment, and also subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you can know when I post other videos. Thank you, God bless.